بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah dear viewers welcome to youth hour my name is Ishaq and with me I have some amazing guests today you will enjoy it. our topic is generational gap do you feel or do you think we have a generational gap with our grandfathers and grandmothers and us is there a big gap do we understand them or do they understand us so it's, it will be really interesting to hear from our um, guest today so on my far end Cameron, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Carmen. I'm an actor from London, but my parents are from Hong Kong. Thank you for having me. Great. Shoba? Uh, my name is Shuhal Ahmed. Uh, I'm a filmmaker and actor, um, and I live in London. Great. Ben? Hi, I'm Ben. I'm an actor and creative. Um, I'm from London. Fantastic. You know, welcome to our show. It's about um, in inspiring youth, so it'll be interesting see, to hear your views as well. Do you feel like there is a gap between us and our grandchildren, our fathers, and the rest of them? Do you think there's any gap? Do you want to go first? Um, you go ahead. <coughs> mm, I think it varies, I think. Because um, obviously, each individual has their own generational sort of experience. For us, this is our, we're talking about our generation. But, you know, uh, the previous generation, um, you know, they will have uh, sort of their experience and their set way, of, set way of doing things, and they might have a certain lifestyle. But obviously, if we're talking about time, time moves on. And so uh, as time moves on, so, does, so, so do we as human beings. Uh, and, and, you know, and there is going to be a, a, a difference there. Uh, but it's, it's how you sort of come together to find the common ground. But, um, you know, there, there's a lot more to it, I think. Um, I think um, on both sides. I think especially now because there is, there is a, a digital world now and mm. then our grandparents, they didn't have access to those things. Yeah. So it's one way of we just moving away. You know, we are busy with our smartphones and everything else and they don't have that. Yeah. Does that, is, does that make them, they don't know? Do we look down on them? I mean, is, is that a case you think? Karen, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think it makes us look down on them. I, I think there's definitely a generation gap in communication. Uh, for example, my grandfather, before he passed away, he was asking me how to send an email. And it was really hard to explain to him. And I said, it's like you write a letter and you send it over on the computer. And he kept asking me, how do you write it and how do you put it inside the computer? So it was a really big gap, but it was really funny. Like, he tried to learn, but he didn't understand it. And at the moment, we're so used to you know, texting on the phone, mm. calling, FaceTime, but our grandparents, they don't really know how to do that. So I think that there's a gap there in terms of communication. Ben, what do you think? Uh, I think they're sort of left out, the older generations, because they're not brought up with it. Because it's easier to learn when you're younger. So, you know, the young kids, they're brought up on their smartphones constantly. And whereas they can get used to a new app every week, it's a little bit harder for an older person to learn that and so they're left out of the loop somewhat. So I think we need to be very careful when we say oh you don't know anything or you don't learn anything it's very important to you know think before we say it because I think it can hurt them it's honestly it can mm -hmm. hurt them they think see, see what I mean so they think we're not respecting them that's not the case actually it's quite normal to say I've tried to teach you and you're not learning that's a normal way but because he's old and he he's, has the experience of life when we tell somebody like that and they feel offended then you have to be very very careful hmm. um, I know I, I've been to um, my when I saw my grandchildren parents actually so first time I was with them in Silet so they went for phone they haven't seen phone before and there was she whole it it was upside down and I was <laughs> laughing so what are you talking about but for that person it's it's first time mm. just like yeah. me and you if you go yeah. anywhere first time it's gonna be difficult to yeah. uh, find a way cool um, I think we you're the third generation, in, especially in this UK, mm. so grandchildren and then parents and you guys. So do you see in the Bangladeshi community we have a gap, big gap? Um, gap in ideas, gap in <coughs> you know, social interaction, do you, do you see? A little bit, yeah. Um, I can't say it's, it's mass massive to the point where it, we were completely disconnected, but um, I would say um, th there is a gap there. Because obviously they, my parents came from Bangladesh and they came over here 
and obviously um, they grew up in a certain environment, uh, you know, which they were used to, and they brought they had a certain mindset. And when I was growing up, you know, they tried to sort of embed that mindset into me in terms of, uh, you know, sort of behavior and respecting your parents and, you know, seeking a certain profession, which they think is the best interest of, of, of me. Uh, but obviously growing up in this country, um, there's opportunities, you know, and, you know, I try to explain that to my parents that you can't just restrict it to one certain mm. thing. Um, you know, times have changed and, you know, as times change, you know, there's opportunities there. Um, and I think that was difficult for them. So that's a bit of a gap there uh, in terms of them understanding that, you know, within the UK, the industry is different to what it might be in Bangladesh and, and even the, the, the time, um, the date, the year. Um, so, um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I think they've come around now, um, but when I was younger, definitely. Um, it was, it was, for them it was hard to sort of grasp the, the gap between us and them. Ben, do you think, you know, like um, old days education and now there's education, do you think it's a big far? What do you think? Or you think it's the same? Oh, it's very different now. It, not just because of the technology we have in classrooms, but also the strictness. Because, I mean, you can't they were get tough, the ruler man, across. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, ruler <laughs> across the knuckles and... You, you couldn't do that today. Not that only. They would do more than that. Oh, yeah, yeah they do yeah, much more than that. A lot more. But, I mean, I think it's for the better that uh, kids aren't getting hit in classrooms. Mm. But, on the other hand, people aren't as disciplined. And so, I mean, yeah. there's upsides and downsides to that. I mean, but people are more Also, free. they had a difficult life as well. They had to, young people, they had to work. I mean, a lot of them people, they couldn't go to schools because of, they had to work in young age. Yeah. We I'm are lucky now, you know, even 21 years old is not the job, it's still okay. But those days, you know, when they were 14, 15, they had to work in 40s, 60s, you know, they, mm. they had to go through that system. Yeah. And it was a difficult time for them. Most of my grandparents actually uh, like left school quite early to go straight into work, and that was the, the sort of the norm for everybody back then. Do you know what age they left to school? I can tell you the exact age, but I think before they finished okay. what, what was secondary school. So yeah, my granddad was straight on the docks like working around the docks there, uh, which is a hard job, you know, pollution that everywhere, all the, all the rats and stuff around there. It's well, not great conditions to work in. And that's all they knew, it's just work to provide for the family and you couldn't really aspire to much more then. Did they tell you any, any of the stories like um, how difficult life was then? Yeah, I mean, no health and safety for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have uh, like accidents and that all the time. It was rough, it was a, a lot of work for little money. And uh, they were grateful for that as well, though, because that's mm. all they had. That's, that's the difference, isn't it? They're, they're, I think they have more humility, I think. Yeah. Um, nowadays, kids are spoiled, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they want everything, and they work, f they work little for nothing, you know? I, ca I can't speak for everyone. I don't, I don't like generalizing it, but, um, you know, kids do, kids have a short attention span, and they want everything now, here and now. And, Back in those days, like Ben said, you know, they had very little, but they appreciated it. So, yeah. Come and tell us about um, if you know any stories around uh, Hong Kong. Like, you know, it's true, and even in when I'm from Bangladesh as well, they didn't have access to education those days. Uh, we had a few of them, and they had a difficult life, you know. But they were happy. Honestly, they were happy. They 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 lived their life, and you know, what whatever they had. And like you said. We've got everything now, but we're still not happy. Yeah, I think it's because we're not really working for things anymore. Like, yeah. when we grow up, our parents have money and they give us what we want. PlayStation, a phone maybe, but back then they didn't have much money, so they had to earn money and earn their own respect. And for the family as well, like when my um, grandfather went to work, people didn't teach him how to be a chef. He had to learn on the sly how to be a chef. So it was actually a waiter, but he'd hang around in the kitchen to learn how to cook. No one taught him, but I think now everything's given to us. If we go to work, we get training for yeah. free, mm. but back then it wasn't. You had to do it on the sly. Do you feel proud of them? I mean, their achievement? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I think I we do. all do, honestly. I mean, th they had a hard life, and mm. they, what we have now, actually, they, they passed it on to us. Yeah. And that's the only reason we, we have what we have now. And it will be testing us uh, what we left for uh, our next generation. It will be very interesting. You know, how about, do you know, um, Fjolvai, look, I'm talking about uh, 40, 50 years back probably. Mm. Those 
marriages and marriages now, mm. it's, it's totally different. <laughs> yeah, it is different. It's oh. totally different. I mean, for you guys, it's going to be shocking. Oh, really? Was that a marriage? Was that a play or something? But for them to understand the wedding nowadays, mm. average wedding in, in, in the UK, I mean, especially Bangladeshi and Muslims, yeah. is 40 to 50,000 pounds average. Yeah, that's, that's we're not very rich people, uh, but expenditure, yeah. we are some people are b moving in that line. So when our older generation says, you guys are doing something wrong here, you could have used that money and built something on. Mm. I think they're right. And if we show our arrogancy with them, I think that's very wrong to do that. But tell me, explain to me those weddings. Do, do you see any difference in them? Yeah, do you I remember anything? Yeah, I remember when my parents got married, they, they got married really young, but it was really simple. Um, not a lot of money was involved back then. Um, and it was different. Nowadays, um, I think people are more concerned about, you know, how lavish it should look, um, spending a lot of money. And I think it's more about image um, and, and pride. And I think they're losing a sense of that, you know, it's two individuals coming together to get married, you know, and, and the beauty is in that, you know, two individuals sort of falling in love and getting married, and that should be celebrated. But I think it gets overshad overshadowed with all, you know, the money that's spent on the wedding and all that. Um, and, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, it's quite common. Um, I don't think it was like that uh, for a lot of people, like my, my parents. Uh, it wasn't like that. You know, even my marriage was very simple, honestly, yeah, simple, very yeah. small, simple, very yeah. simple, yeah. and um, you, I didn't have any pressure in my head. Imagine I spent 50,000 pounds in that wedding, and yeah. next morning I got have to go to work and, and crying with the, all mm. those <laughs> baggages I have. Some people do remortgage their house, and they sell the car, and yeah. they do it. I don't understand these things, so I think we are really, really... It's, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a problem. I mean, what I would say is that I can't tell someone how they should sort of plan their marriage and whatnot. Everybody's got their right to spend their money however they want. Um, but I think, obviously, it, it does come down to, you know, what is your intention and, and you know, and what is that you're trying to get out of? And I think just, you just need to be sensible, I think. That's the most important thing. Be sensible and responsible. If you spend X amount of money um, and you're borrowing money, you're putting yourself in debt, is it really worth it? You know, because you, you have to think long term. Mm. Um, and yeah, um, I think. So, where do you think is the gap? I mean, both sides thinking you guys spend, like all the generation saying you guys spending too much. Yeah. And we're saying, no, I have to because everyone's doing it. Yeah. So, there's, a, there's already a conflict in of, of understanding. So, how mm. do we bridge that gap? I think we'll do in the second half, probably. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah probably. talk about solutions. <laughs> um, if, if we could say something about the marriages, the like old marriage and new marriage, is there any differences you see? Oh, well, my grandparents they had an arranged marriage. So, they saw each other for the first time when they were getting married. They hadn't met before. Oh, wow. um, oh. I can't imagine having that. Mm. <laughs> so they had to really trust their own parents to find them a suitor. Mm. And it worked out. Like they, they were married for a really long time. They didn't get divorced. Like At the moment, I find, in this generation, yeah. it's really easy to ask for divorce. Yeah. Back then, yeah. No, no, people just text and say, I'm, I'm, not, com I'm not coming home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the thing. Uh, but it, it, what Carmen just said, she hit the nail in the head there. It goes back to what is your intention? And if you're marrying this person, you know, have you thought about it, you know, before rushing in? And yeah, people are getting married and then, you know, next thing you know, they're divorced. Uh, it's a huge, and I don't think people actually realize how big of a decision it is. You know, you're marrying someone. It's just like, hey, I want to marry someone. You're yeah. marrying someone yeah. for life. Yeah. And that's a, there's a responsibility on you. Um, so yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a big decision and, and you need to you know, think very carefully. You know. Some people want the wedding more than the actual uh, marriage. Yeah, yeah. 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 sometimes that, 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 that's, that's the thing. That's the wrong m mindset to go into. You shouldn't think about, oh, how I want my wedding, how much money should I spend? You should think about, okay, is this the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with? That's the first thing that should be going uh, through your head. You know, um, and then you know um, you take it one step at a time. But yeah, you know, this, that's the problem. I think you know you you said it. You know, some people might look at other people and they envy us, and they said, "Oh, I want you know a huge wedding like that." Um, and yeah, it just gets lost. So, what's it like in Hong Kong? The marriages are the acceleration, and how do we do it? Uh, family is a very big thing. I'm sure in your culture as Same, well, yeah. when yeah. you get married, it's not that person. You have to, you're marrying to their family. They yeah. have to like you. Absolutely. Yeah. So even a traditional Chinese wedding, you involve the parents. The couples have to get on their knees and give tea to the parents at the ceremony. And it's like getting a blessing from them. But I know that over here, 
you don't have to do that. You don't have to get on your knees and give tea to your in-laws. Is it very different, like the new weddings and the old weddings? Is that really different? Um, Culturally, well, or actually, now in Hong Kong, they normally do two weddings. So one mm. is the uh, white wedding, uh, a Western one, mm. and then in the evening they do a Chinese one where they're dressed in red and they do the dinner and a tea ceremony. So uh -oh. it costs a lot of money to have two weddings or two ceremonies, but that's how they like it now to integrate of the Western culture. Okay, so, so s same uh, couple, yeah, it's, yes. not two, it's not two, uh, two couples. Do <laughs> no, you? no, okay. same couple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Ben, tell me something about the UK, man, because um, in UK, um, if you could describe your grandparents' wedding and, and nowadays. Uh, they were quite small back in the day as well. I mean, they're, you still had lots of people in the church and that, but they weren't all these lavish ceremonies of all fancy hired cars everywhere. It was just everyone getting together, you know, you'd have your neighbours there, your friends there, everyone would just come in, go to the church and go to the pub afterwards and like celebrate the like, couple but uh, nowadays they're really fancy there's all themes and stuff I mean loads of weddings are recently that but they're, they're lovely but they're really expensive yeah but still not that big as the uh, the ones we have we have what uh, average is 800 to 1000 people <gasps> in one wedding that's average yeah. isn't it um, yeah that's the average yeah, yeah. so oh, wow. when you when you think about <laughs> your wedding when you say about what 50 people 100 people I'm going to have a Vegas wedding. Yeah, 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 similar. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that level, isn't it? Something like yeah. that. 100 or 150 maybe. You did a big haul for that. Yeah. yeah a huge haul, yeah. But yeah, so can you imagine if where we from there and then where we are now? I mean, mm. it, it's, it, to me it sounds, cr it is crazy. I think you just need to find the balance, I think. I, obviously, I know for, for girls when they're growing up, they have their sort of dream marriage in their head, how they want it. And I wouldn't want to deprive someone of that. I think you just need to meet somewhere in the middle. Um, so like I said, it comes back to being sensible and responsible and how much you spend on your wedding. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, you know, when you get married and you see your wedding day, it, it's going to be a day to remember, I guess, and you want to make it as special as possible. But again, <laughs> it comes back to being sensible and responsible and just making sure that... Um, you know what, you need, to take, you need to take Ben in one of the weddings, then, uh, then he will see it. Yeah. <laughs> he will see it, yeah, yeah. I'll invite it to my wedding, you man. <laughs> Excellent, there you go. Ask him, is he going to have a um, new style or old style? <laughs> 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 Only if he has a new style, yeah. then you go. Yeah. I don't mind either. You'll I'll have I'll more food. I'm always down for celebration. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have more food then. <laughs> that works for me. Now that people are doing it in the hotels, man, you know, for really? hotels and all that stuff. Yeah, it's moving in that line. There's no venue anymore. You know, it's so small for them and it's... It's gone out of uh, uh, my head. Um, can I ask something about um, jobs? Imagine um, nowadays jobs and old jobs. Some of the old jobs our parents or probably the grandparents used to do, you know, people might say, ooh, really? In some cases, it shouldn't be. All jobs are jobs. So uh, if you could compare both of them, it would be really interesting. Can I start with you? Yeah, sure. I think um, back then you had the job and then you stuck with the job. But nowadays, it's easy to change jobs because the opportunities are there. What kind of jobs were they, I mean, old days? Um, my, uh, my grandfather, he started off as a waiter. Then he was spying on the chefs in the restaurant. And then he became a chef and he became a dim sum chef. That's what he did. So he stayed in the restaurant business. And my grandma, she was a seamstress. She was a tailor. And she also branched into making umbrellas as well, which involved using a um, sewing machine for that. How about the new jobs now at the moment? This generation, what kind of jobs they have now? A lot of it is... Um, I'm assuming in Hong Kong it's all about digital stuff and, you know... Yeah, there's a lot of computers. <laughs> a, lot of compu a lot of computer work and working in offices. And now it, having education is such a big thing now. So they want their children to be doctors or lawyers or accountants. That's like the, the top three they want their children to be. I'm going to come to you. I want to know how the Hong Kong schools run, especially... Uh, um, how they do, what kind of stuff, or how they discipline kids. It would be very interesting. Ben, tell me about um, jobs, old days. I'm talking about 40s and 60s. Um, yeah. Those lovely guys and you know, ladies they used to do. And um, how do we see them now? Well, a lot of it was sort of factory jobs. Factory and, uh, and on the port as well, like quite laborious or like dangerous polluted places. But I mean, they were there were whole jobs. You can just walk into a factory and get a job the same day. It was it was quite easy to sort of just would, go and get a job. Would you, would you do the same job? Maybe not for the pay. I mean, I want okay. more than a couple of shillings a day. <laughs> 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 but I mean, I'd do it. Yeah, but 
I, I, I prefer the ones these days. Yeah, because they were really hard days. I mean, they were they really, were. really tough and really, you know, it's more like uh, a, your boss is going to be really, uh, I'm assuming, with, with a big moustache. And, uh, and, you know, yeah, he didn't have I'm assuming, yeah. There's no one going to talk about him. So it's all change. It's good to cha see that change. Mm. But I think, you know, they deserve our respect for, you know, the hard way of, of mm. lifestyle they had. <coughs> and they're giving it to their families like... You know, it's nothing for them, it's for the everybody else around them. There used to be a big, big, big bunch of family around, they used to live together mm. and stuff like that. Can I ask you to describe the jobs, um, <laughs> old, our dada's uh, jobs and the jobs we do now? Yeah, what difference uh, do you see? There is a difference there. Uh, when my dad came to this country, he worked in a factory too. Um, even back then, I think he was doing... Late Almost everyone, I think yeah, my dad as well. Late same 70s, thing. They, early they, 80s, even he was working in a factory. And like Ben said, it wasn't really pretty, but it was only one of the few jobs that they can get their hands on. And it was, you know, um, it, 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 you know it provided for the family. You know, um, mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, so I, I have um, enormous respect for the people um, during that time. Um, they did jobs that they probably didn't want to do, but they had to do because those were the jobs that were available. Um, obviously now, you know, the economy has changed, society has changed and moved on. There's more opportunities, like uh, Carmen said. Uh, our generation, I wouldn't say we're completely spoiled because it's still t hard to get a job mm. and, and you need to meet certain criteria and qualifications. Uh, but definitely we have choice, mm. which, you know, our parents and grandparents didn't have, you know. So there's a big difference there. Um, and the times are different, you know, economically and all that. So, um, like I said, I can't speak for them because, you know. Because the, for them, it's actually, they had a lot of dreams for us. Yeah, they did, yeah. Oh Therefore, yeah, look, yeah. I couldn't do it. I yeah. want my, uh, my kids to do this and that, that, that. Those dreams are real dreams mm. and very um, inspirational dreams. And some of them came true yeah. and some of them didn't happen. So, you know, their dreams, you know, it's amazing. When your dream comes true, it's, it's always. So you, sometimes we see if, if my brother or someone comes, become a scientist. We don't have one yet. Yeah. So <laughs> you would see the parents, oh my God, they almost cry, man. Yeah. Oh my God, in my family I have this. There's pride there, yeah. I, even, it's, um, I'm guessing it's the same for all of us. You know, our parents came here. Well, Carmen's parents came here. Our, our parents came here for them wanting a better life for us. Um, and uh, they made some sacrifices to be here. You know, you know talking to you guys, you, yeah. we have a lot of respect for them. Yeah. Why do they, sometimes they feel we don't respect them anymore. Why do they think, where did that come from? Is it something we're not communicating well in them or we're not saying to them? What is it? Something is, something is missing, isn't it? <laughs> to be honest, if I'm being very honest with you, I think it's just, being a, it, it's just the typical life of a teenager. Even <laughs> for them, they were probably, you know, snapping at their parents. Um, uh, <laughs> and that's what being a teenager is. You know, you think you know it all um, and you mm. don't listen to your parents and you always want to get what you want. And then your parents, because of the experiences they had, know you have to work for what you want. You have to listen, you know, uh, you, you don't speak rudely to others or me. Um, and yeah, I think it's just, uh, it's just life, you know, the experience of it. Um, so I, d I think there it's not much of a generational gap. It, that's just human nature. Um, and that's just how we are, you know, um, growing up, uh, no matter where you're from. Um, but obviously in, in certain cases, you know. Ben, tell me why do they feel that we don't idolize them, we don't respect them? Why do you think? I think it's because um, younger people are struggling between living by the wisdom of their elders plus, you know, dealing with a world that's constantly changing. So we've got, they're, they're sort of living in two worlds. Well, do you think we're not expressing well? I mean, telling them, look, uh, you know, granted, you guys have done so much. We don't say that in their face. Yes. So I think we could have done much, much better, I think, and that would have made them a bit more... I mean, they're quite proud, and rightly so, they've done well. But it's sort of like, this, I do know, like, we do know better for certain aspects of the world, and it, it's, it's hard to sort of break that to them as well. It's like, again, with the, we were talking about technology before, like you said, with the phone as well. It's like... It's hard to do it in a way mm. that's not condescending, which is, mm. you know, a big issue with when talking to older people, trying to talk to them. But you don't want to patronise them. Yeah, exactly. Sort of, yeah. Sort of like okay, I'm going to come back to you after the break. We're just going to have a small break. Dear viewers, stay with us, and I'll see you after the break, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> Thank you.